Welcome to our The China Briefing Show, where we dive into the latest buzz from the East and beyond with a touch of lightheartedness. Today's roundup is quite the mixed bag, so let's jump right in. First off, a shocking incident involving US CEO Angela Chow, who tragically lost her life last month. According to the police, Chow was under the influence, with her blood alcohol level nearly triple the legal limit when she drove her car into a pond in Texas. It's a stark reminder of the dangers of drinking and driving. Meanwhile, over in the geopolitical sphere, tensions are brewing as the US claims China is beefing up its military might, with eyes on Taiwan by 2027. It's like something out of a Cold War era novel, but with modern day stakes. Switching gears to the skies, Cathay Pacific is soaring above its competitors despite facing its fair share of turbulence. It seems like investors are betting big on the airline, which recently posted record profits. On a different note, the potential return of Donald Trump to the US presidency has got Europe in a tizzy, but Asia? Not so much. However, some voices are raising concerns that this calm might be a bit premature given Trump's unpredictability and the fragile state of US-China relations. And in a twist that sounds straight out of a spy thriller, a former NYPD officer accused of spying for China has been fired, even after the charges were dropped. So, whether it's the tragic end of a business magnet, the strategic moves of global powers, or the ups and downs of the airline industry, there's never a dull moment in our global village. Stay tuned for more details on these stories. Please continue to watch for more in-depth coverage. US CEO Angela Chow was drunk when she drove into Pond and died, police say. South China Morning Post Angela Chow, CEO of the foremost group shipping company and sister-in-law of US Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, was drunk when she drove her car into a pond and died last month, according to an investigation by the Blanco County Sheriff's Office in Texas. The report concluded that Chow's death was an accident and that her blood alcohol level was nearly three times the state's legal limit. Chow died on 10 February after dinner at a ranch near Johnson City, west of Austin. China on track to be ready for Taiwan invasion by 2027, US says. Bloomberg China is building its military and nuclear arsenal on a scale not seen since World War II and all signs suggest it's sticking to ambitions to be ready to invade Taiwan by 2027, a top US admiral testified. Beijing's official defense budget has increased by 16% over recent years to more than $223 billion. In the three years since he took command, the People's Liberation Army, PLA, has added more than 400 fighter aircraft, along with more than 20 major warships. It's also doubled its inventory of ballistic and cruise missiles since 2020. Cathay is the least worst among Asian airline stocks. Bloomberg. Despite facing delays, competition from rivals, and criticism from aviation regulators, shares in Cathay Pacific Airlines have climbed over the past six months, outperforming its peers. Investors appear to be less concerned about the airline's operational issues and more focused on what the stock can do for their portfolios. Cathay recently posted record annual profits, and although the stock saw a minor sell-off following the announcement, it has proven to be a better bet than other airlines. Cathay also has the advantage of having three eager shareholders and a small free float. Why Asia should sound the Trump alarm. Foreign policy. While Europe is panicking at the prospect of Donald Trump returning as US president, Asia seems to be relatively calm. Asian countries, such as Japan, India, and Taiwan, believe they managed Trump well during his last term and are confident they can handle him again. However, this calmness underestimates the impact Trump's return could have on Asian security and misjudges his plans to reshape US foreign policy. Asian leaders should be more concerned about Trump's growing unpredictability, the fragile state of US-China relations, and the potential turmoil within the US government if he were to be re-elected. One of the reasons for Asia's calmness is the belief in policy continuity. Many analysts predict that there will be some continuity if Trump returns to office in 2025. However, there will also be chaos and disruption. Asian nations are in a worse position to cope this time around, 
as their leaders may not be as skilled at handling Trump. Additionally, Trump's growing unpredictability is a cause for concern. If he is willing to change his stance on issues like the TikTok ban, US allies and partners must be prepared for significant changes in other areas. The fragile state of US-China relations is another problem. While relations currently seem calm, there is a risk of a new flare-up that could escalate into a genuine crisis. Trump's handling of the Israel-Hamas war should give Asian leaders pause about how he might handle a serious standoff over Taiwan, for example. Finally, a Trump victory would cause strife within the US itself. The potential shake-up a new Trump administration would bring to the US government, including the replacement of career civil servants with political loyalists, could have a seismic impact on US foreign policy. This would distract US policymakers and invite global rivals to test US alliances and commitments. Overall, the calmness in Asian capitals regarding a possible Trump return is a serious misjudgment. Asian leaders should be more concerned about the potential impact on Asian security and the US government's ability to handle foreign policy issues. Instead of looking on the bright side, it would be smarter for Asian countries to prepare for the storm that a Trump presidency could bring. A police officer was accused of spying for China. The charges were dropped, but the NYPD fired him. Associated Press By Madaji Ang Wang, a former New York City police officer, is fighting his dismissal after criminal charges against him for spying for China were dropped. The police commissioner fired Ang Wang on 29 January for refusing to submit to questioning by internal affairs investigators about the spying case. Ang Wang said he declined to appear before the investigators on the advice of his lawyers, who had been denied department documents ahead of the questioning to prepare. Ang Wang, who was born in Tibet and granted asylum in the US as a teenager, spent six months in detention before being released on bail awaiting trial. Hong Kong keeps base rate at 5.75% after US Fed's vote to hold fire. South China Morning Post The Hong Kong Monetary Authority, HKMA, has kept its key interest rate unchanged at 5.75%, following the Federal Reserve's decision to keep its target rate at 5.25% to 5.5%. The HKMA has maintained its base rate since 1983 in line with the Fed, to preserve the local currency peg to the US dollar. Diplomats warning not to erode Rudd's standing in Washington after Trump barbs. ABC Former Australian diplomat, George Brandes, has warned that the federal opposition's rush to jump on US presidential candidate Donald Trump's character assessment of Australia's envoy in Washington could erode his standing in the capital. Trump recently said that he had heard Kevin Rudd was a little bit nasty and not the brightest bulb. Brandes believes that it is important for Australia's senior diplomatic representatives to have bipartisan support, as it diminishes their influence in the country to which they are accredited if they do not. He also suggested that Trump's comments were being overinterpreted and that the interviewer, Nigel Farage, was simply trying to attract as much attention as possible. China's Shenzhen sees trade swell, with impressive volumes to US amid tech war. South China Morning Post Shenzhen, China's southern tech hub, experienced a significant increase in exports during the first two months of 2022 due to rising demand for electric vehicles and an increase in deals with Belt and Road Initiative countries. Customs figures indicate that during this period, the value of goods shipped from the city reached 441.4 billion Chinese yuan, $61.3 billion, a YOY increase of 53.1%. The city's exports to the US rose 62.4% YOY, while its trade with Belt and Road countries increased 57.8%. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, 
and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO Brief via email.